What an awesome run. By Mr. Scavenger, 216. Guys, next up we have Batman Arkham Asylum Any Percent with Kojo Sal. So guys, get really hyped for that. It's going to be a good run. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick ad break. We will be back with you all in just a minute. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Awesome Games Done Quick 2018. We are setting up right now for Batman Arkham Asylum. In the meantime, I have some donations to read for you. Uh, by the way, this is the Voiks on hosting duty during this next run. Uh, we have a $10 uh, anonymous donation. Hey yo, always great to watch AGDQ, one of my favorite stream events. I get to see some of my favorite games like F-Zero GX get broken in half while also being exposed to cool looking games I haven't played like Blaster Master Zero. Keep up the awesome work and can't wait for the awful block. Thank you so much for the donation. Uh, we have $50 donation from DS Dad, who says, is Blaster Master Zero any good on the three? DS, question mark? Uh, we have a $15 donation from Alondria. It's great to help this great cause again. I love NT Creates Games, and Blaster Master Zero was even more enjoyable than I expected when I played. So it's cool to watch a speed run. Thanks for that. Well, thank you so much for the donation, and uh, it's glad, well, I'm glad to hear anyway that you are enjoying the event. Uh, we have a $20 donation from SNES Fan. Uh, greetings all from the great frozen ice box known as Canada. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Eh? Uh, love this time of year when GDQ starts up. First chance I've had to donate, but been watching since I saw Duckfist run Mega Man 9 back in 2012. Good luck to all the runners, and donation goes to the runner's choice. Uh, I believe that came in during the previous run, uh, but the... 
runner's choice for the next run coming up, Batman Arkham Asylum, is actually going towards a bonus game for Donkey Kong Country 1 Reverse Boss Order, which is currently at $8,114.23 uh, out of the 20000 needed to add that game to our marathon. Uh, the Reverse Boss Order is a really awesome run if you've never seen it before. Uh, so if you uh, throw in any donations, you want to see that game, go ahead and add that on as your donation incentive. Thank you so much. We have a $150 donation from I'm Weasel, who says, Shout out to Uranium Anchor from your friends in Gratz Guild. We're raising a glass of Spider-Man special in your honor. Thank you. Uh, for that very generous donation. Uh, we have $10 from Bryce Dat Game Guy. Uh, I'm so glad that one of my favorite childhood games got a really good remake after all these years. Thanks, runners, for bringing this classic and remake uh, the attention that it deserves. Good luck and save your pet frog. Uh, thankfully, I don't believe that frog croaked, so uh, I believe we met that. We had a $10 donation from Biospark45, who said, when I was in fifth grade, I did a book report on the Worlds of Power Blaster Master book. So of course I have to donate for this run, and also now look on Google to see if I can find a copy of this book. Well, good luck in your search, and thank you for the donation. Uh, we have a $100 donation from Dan40. Uh, who says, I'm currently working on collecting all Korok seeds in Breath of the Wild while watching AGDQ. Ooh, <laughs> that sounds like a bit of a, a task. Uh, I would love to see the runner do it in master mode. So here you go. Excellent. Thank you so much for the donation towards the master mode. Uh, let me see if I can find that real quick here. So we're currently at $8,137 out of the 50000 needed for the Master Mode. That's going to be our grand finale here for the marathon. Uh, but that is definitely working towards that goal. We have a $225 donation from Pierpont Lemkin. Thank you so much for that very generous donation. <laughs> this is a great one. Uh, we have $50 from uh, Omanko Suki, who says, Greetings from Germany. I always love donating for such a great cause. Putting this towards validating the Link to the Past round <laughs> randomizer run. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, we had a $10... All right, uh, we had a $10 donation here from Lady Knight. I, I discovered AJDQ last year right after my mother died from a lung cancer. Uh, you helped me a lot to change my mind that week, so to thank you, I've decided to donate each year now. Keep up the great work. You guys are awesome. Uh, it looks like our run is ready to go, so we're going to go ahead and throw this over uh, to uh, Kojo Sao for Batman Arkham Asylum. Hello. Hi. Welcome. My name is Kojo Sao, and this is going to be Arkham Asylum I'm on the couch. I'm Bubbles Del Fuego. Bubbles Del Fuego. Are we ready to start? All right. Uh, timer, I guess, in three, two, one, go. Yes, sir. He's uh, waiting for the patient handle. just before you Heck yeah. So we're going to spend tonight in the asylum. Unfortunately, <laughs> at the beginning of the run, there's a little bit of walking. 
forward, and there's really not much tech to do about it. The if you if you at home at home and you can find a way to skip this, then you'd be a speedrunning hero, really, because this is it just takes time. I can talk about a little bit about the run before um, before it really starts. So this is Arkham Asylum on the PC. I'm playing at 30 FPS because, um, which is the same frame rate that the console versions run on. Um, but I'm playing on the PC, which is the fastest version for running um, due to loading times. Um, and the, but the frame rate changes uh, certain glitches in the game later on that we can use to sequence break. In particular, one that uh, saves a lot of time. So. The plot is happening right now, which is that uh, this guy, the Joker, has been captured, and he will be freed in approximately five minutes. He will uh, be free and have wreaked havoc. That's a spoiler. It, it is a spoiler. Another spoiler is that we beat him in the end. We clown get, man. Yeah, clown. <laughs> we uh, we get to punch clown man by the end of the game. Be time for you if anybody wants to go over to Kojo's chat and do your best ice puns, <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> there will be time for chat interaction later, I think. Oh. But not, not right now. Make sure to subscribe if you want to talk in the chat. All proceeds go to Prevent Cancer Foundation. It's not a joke, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> this game is very crisp on this monitor. That doesn't really apply to anybody except for me. It's just something I noticed. I think uh, now is a good time for one or two donations, I think. And then there's something coming up that's really cool. All right, perfect. Uh, we had a $10 donation from Owa Tagu Siam, who says, Oh, what a goose I am. Thank you. Uh, and we have a uh, $5 donation from Paul Bierne. Loving the show. Uh, this money goes to Sumichu to sing in the Metal Gear Solid 3 run. Got to hear that jam. All right. So this is some really important speed tech happening. This guy's about to get spooked by the Joker when he goes boo. Ready? Whoa. So normally the guy that I was standing behind, this guy, he moves backwards. You know, because he steps back because he's very afraid. But I stood behind him, which actually saves about 0.5 seconds. So <laughs> you're welcome. I love how since there's like a five-minute cutscene, you can just say that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know it's really important, and I and I nailed it uh, flawlessly. So we're still on on record pace actually. And record was achieved like three days ago. Yes, Psychotic 92 beat me two days ago. So congratulations. What's that record time? I believe it's 119.36. That's right. Which is 20 seconds faster than the old one, or 15. It's coming down. So here's a, what was it, Large Crocodile? This is Large Crocodile. Large Crocodile. This is Killer Croc. He's a villain later on. Um, he is large. I, I apologize that this part is not really that more enthralling. I was considering um, loading a save file past this to skip it, but What's I thought it'd be doing? a better idea to showcase like a full run start to finish the way that we would run and submit a time. So. I will hunt you yeah. Down. It's almost over, anyways. A toy color won't stop me from killing you. Batman. If you're still here, you've you've sit, you sat through the worst of it, really. Yeah. If we skipped by the cutscenes of all the runs here, Final Happy Fantasy would only be like five I minutes. Really need to get me some new okay, move up. <clears throat> I actually do have a donation real quick, if that's okay. Um, one second, actually. Because okay. I'm about to do something that's also very important. So if you jam yourself in this corner while the elevator goes down, it doesn't go down. And uh, this happens. So I'm on top of the elevator. It doesn't really do much. Um, it's just something to keep us occupied while we we can break out of the elevator as well, or off the top of it. I mean. Anyways, you can do the donation now if you'd like. Cool. We had a $500 donation from Niv Black. He says, "Hey Kojo, good luck with the zips and bell skip. Don't forget to bat flap." Bat flaps. That's very important. Thank you. 
Five hundred dollar bat flap. Five hundred dollar bat flap. Yeah. If you wiggle the the, the left stick, get you left and right like that, he Tell me jerks into a T pose You've because never let me you this there's no easily. animation for it. We can also do that. Really totally fall off. <laughs> Nothing much. Um, you can talk to this guy. That's cage face. Unfortunately, we can't move past the, the area where the Joker is up there. So if I try and walk forward, sorry, <laughs> uh, you can't do that. Unfortunately, the, the power is about to go out, and uh, the Joker is about to get free from What's from his little prison Stay where you are. or his little ch his shackles. I don't know what to call them. But Batman was in the elevator the whole time, so you don't mess with Batman. Pulls that one on Gordon all the time in the movies. He does. So. We're about to spend the next uh, hour and ten minutes dealing with people who mess with Batman, unfortunately. So it's a shame they couldn't hear me. And gameplay is about to begin very soon. Through that door, the speed run away. It's rolling ad. Only three? <laughs> I'll be sure to try harder next time. What say we aim for a hundred? Awesome. Long night, Jim. <laughs> now let's get this party started. That is right. Let's get it started. So this is on easy difficulty, um, which is the fastest difficulty for a couple reasons. Combat is really fast because you just... You punch, and in the beginning, we're just going to be uh, knocking guys out like that. Um, boss fights are also much faster. So I, I ripped that vent thing off the off the wall really quickly by mashing. Um, normally, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to mash the A button on your controller or spacebar. But if you bind it to mouse wheel, then you just roll the mouse wheel, and uh, it's really fast. We'll beat those guys up. And now we can also do something called trophy duping. So I'm really only supposed to get 200 experience from this thing. But if I do that, I get 2,600. And that means I actually picked up 13 trophies in one frame um, just by rolling the mouse wheel again. And I get my first level before even starting the game, really. Or before, uh, right after the first fight. Which is pretty impressive, considering you're supposed to get it, you know, in another eight minutes or so. Leveling in this game can help with healing, because every time you get a health upgrade, it brings your health all the way up to max. And so if he ever needs that, it's really in handy. Yeah. It's almost impossible to die if you can level up. Mm -hmm. And you can actually, if you have a full upgrade point to spend, you can buy the, uh, the, the health upgrade in your... Um, in the upgrade menu, and it'll completely fill up your health instantly that, um, that way as well. We call that bat snacks. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes you just gotta take a snack and get some health back. So this is the tutorial area of the game, intensive treatment. Um, you're normally supposed to return to this building uh, much later in the game, about really about halfway through. I should mention I used the mouse wheel again the uh, the other direction in order to skip that conversation really quickly. Um, but you're supposed to return to this building later in the game. We're not going to do that. So this is all you're going to see of it. Um, the first time around, it sort of serves as an extended tutorial, teaching you how to do things like uh, stealth. So I'm going to stealth this guy real quick. Guys is down, but not for long. So he got stealth. Um, there he goes. And then we're going to break out of this room. Because the game's design is sort of built around, it's a, um, I guess, very akin to a Metroidvania sort of game where you return to areas later once you get certain upgrades or items that like can let you, they let you progress and go into new areas. So a lot of the game's pro progression is gated that way. So you're meant to return to every area at least once afterwards, especially if you want to get 100% of all collectibles in the game. You need to do that. You just have to return everywhere once you get all the upgrades. So these guys, I'm just going to blow these teeth while I wait. Um, these guys are being trapped by the Joker gas in that room. Fun fact, in the German version, it's actually called um, Joker's Gift. Joker toxin. So Listen, I hope they the enjoyed their gift. Gas. Anyone caught in there is dead. 
So now we can finally grapple up and save them. Had to wait for the story to happen, though. But unfortunately, as, as far as sequence breaks this go, there's really nothing attack. much to do Joker's in this in this beginning this. area. Um, we just don't have really the. There's no gadgets to exploit. There's no, you know, level geometry that really is exploitable. The only thing that potentially could be exploitable is an old uh, version of zipping, which is a glitch you'll see later. There's an old version of that which um, was patched out for this version. So if you can find a copy of the game um, on disc on a on an actual DVD, install it. Get the game to register through Games for Windows Live, which doesn't exist anymore, as far as I know. There might be something there. Nobody has really bothered to find out. I can wonder why. Because <laughs> it's just such a trouble. That's not true, actually. Some, some runners have sort of looked into the possibility of there being a sequence break, and it doesn't look likely. And Get him. That's, that's why I know. Oh, yeah. Get him, dude. I forgot Get to mention him. this guy. He's, He's going to hit you. Ugh. Yeah. This guy's really tough. He's a really tough boss. If you double tap A, you'll direction evade. That's that's true. I'm not going to do that, though, because this fight only progresses if either two things happen. One is a certain amount of time passes, or two, you run out of health. So now he's going to have his heart attack, and uh, there he goes. Not like this. Not like this. Um, this guy was sleeping the whole time. So now he'll get up and progress the game. The game runs on the Unreal Engine, and it makes use of the Unreal Chapter System, which a developer could probably explain this way better than I could. But essentially, the way the game works is is there are different states that the world, the game world, can exist in at any given moment, um, and those are the chapters. And the chapters only progress. Let's see how many trophies I got. Not a, not that many, but the um. The state of the game world progresses as you progress through these chapters, and there are certain events to trigger those, so um, essentially the goal of this speedrun is to hit those certain triggers as fast as possible, which is, I guess, just a fancy way of saying do everything that you need to do except for what you don't need to do. Batman, what's happening? Skip that conversation and run down the hallway. We have to go... Uh, in the plot, we're tracking down... The Frank Bowles, who was the guard, the guard that got scared, actually. He, he ends up being a main character for the first 10 minutes of the game. Um, we have to go track him down by finding his bourbon flask and scanning it. That was Batman. Yeah, he kicked him in the face. He was holding a bat. I wanted, to, I wanted to roll into this door because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to scan this while he's still on his, you know, doing his conversation with Oracle, which I think worked, because then this phone call happens, but he immediately shuts it off and keeps running. I should switch to my forensic scanner and reveal the trail. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure where, uh, where we're going. I think this seems to be the right way. We have to climb this elevator shaft. What the hell Which happened? is, again, we don't really have any tools to do it, so we just got to do it the old-fashioned way. It was a good jump, though. I tried to sort of jump as diagonally as possible to save the climbing. There's also a very small thing you can do where when you're running you can and doing a jump like this, you can turn the camera. So I ran perpendicular to the camera, and that just makes the jump... Um, a little bit quicker because if you were to run straight there, he would um, stop his jump and like right before the ledge, so that he would have to climb up the ledge, and it just wastes time. But if you turn the camera, that doesn't happen. That's interesting. I don't know why. That's a good grapple. You can like just grapple that through that uh, like hole in the geometry. So now we're going to see the combat of easy difficulty in action, which is to press square with certain timings and on certain enemies until the fight's over. So I bought critical, up, uh, critical Strikes as the first upgrade, and what that does is each Critical Strike, as long as you time your, your punch, it will do double damage to each enemy. 
And on easy difficulty, they only take three hits. So now it becomes two hits um, for every enemy, except for the last guy that you fight in an every encounter who will go down in one hit. So you want to save... Basically, you want to save one guy for last, if possible, because then that saves a couple hits. Yeah, after you play, like, Arkham games for a while, like either Asylum, City, Night, Origins, don't talk about that game, uh, you kind of just get, like, this feel for fights, where you just keep mentally in your head, like, okay, that guy's had three hits so far, that guy's had two. Right. And, uh, it takes some getting used to, but th that makes the game really fun sometimes on harder difficulties. Yeah. On hard difficulty, for example, I think enemies take eight hits, eight normal hits, um, or something, some some number around there, which is significantly more. And so hard combat actually ends up becoming knocking everybody down and doing ground takedowns as quickly as possible. We're gonna knock this guy down. Oh. So yeah, you can really Whoops. abuse that later on in the game with the grapple as well. You'll see. But when enemies fall like at least five feet, they'll die or yep. get knocked out. Batman doesn't kill people. Right. He does not kill people except for when he does. Yes. Which we'll f we may see some some death. Oh, he's dead actually. So there's yeah. some death. Batman didn't do it. That's true. So for these three guys, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to throw batterings at these two. It only hit the guy on the left though. These guys are now looking up at where I threw the batarang, so I'm going to throw this one. That guy didn't notice me. He was looking straight at me, but he didn't notice me because... Whoops. Nice scream. Anyways, he didn't notice me because his field of vision is actually looking up because I threw the batarang from, like, way up there. We have a few seconds before we get a phone call so we can, you know, increase our grip can take the level. Pic can you take pictures? Pictures? Yeah, like for Riddler. Who's the Riddler? The <laughs> oh, it's yeah. this guy. The Riddler. So the Riddler is the optional sign cop turn in the game. Um, he's not optional right now, right now, because this is the tutorial Riddler uh, challenge. So we have to... Hold down the uh, detective mode button, which does this whole take a picture thing um, of whatever the answer to the riddle is. And the riddle is this. Oh, whoops. A little too early. Messed up my Riddler tech. I'm going to see if, before he finishes talking, if I can scan this one. Doesn't really matter, but it gives a little bit of experience. I got Ooh. it. You can also roll forward through this cutscene. Get riddled. He, yeah, two riddles in one go. Didn't expect that. We can walk through this guy. It was a massive. So that's that conversation. Mouse wheel is very fast for skipping conversations, and we're almost free. Finally, we get to es escape from intensive treatment for for finally. We can also try and scan this radio going around the corner. Doesn't do much on easy, because we don't really need the experience. There it is. Um, so just go for it for fun, really. But we get more experience, actually. So now we have two upgrade points before leaving intensive treatment, which is actually pretty good, because um, it means I get to buy upgrades for the rest of the run, really, whenever I get to that point. So I'm not going to be short on upgrades. I think now is a good time to read maybe like three donations. If there are three. Or two. Or one. Oh, uh, yes, we have donations. Uh, we have $50 <laughs> from Gal Scott Moxie. Always happy to donate for such a good cause. Best of luck to Kojo from your friends in West Virginia. Donation goes to the runner's choice, uh, which was also uh, Donkey Kong Country reverse boss order. Uh, we also had $200 from Oxguy3, who Ox says, Oh, heck, I got to donate while my man Bubbles is on the couch. Man, donation also goes to runner's choice. $200, thank you. 200 yeah. Oh, heck. Oh, heck. Oh, heck. Oh, heck, I'm prideful. Uh, we also had $20 from Honorable J. Howdy, Kojo. Hey, I will Jay. be severely disappointed if you don't get at least one Moon Goon. Oh. Sorry, I couldn't be there. Good luck with the out-of-bounds shenanigans. 
Thanks, Jay. So we've protected the Batmobile successfully. Whoops, there we go. Get it? Thank you. So this is the explosive gel, is the first gadget that you get, well, the second if you count Batarangs. Um, it's also the glitchiest gadget in the game because you can use it to overlap animations and when you overlap animations, um, I mean, we already see what happens when you overlap an animation of Batman turning left and right repeatedly. He goes into T-pose, right? Now imagine if we overlap an animation of, say, Batman throwing a Batarang and, I don't know, blowing something up with explosive gel. Funky stuff might happen. So right now we have to, um, we have to go to the medical facility and save the doctors that are there. Um, we're not going to save any doctors. They'll save themselves, actually, from the, from the Joker. But we still have to go there to, you know, progress the plot and you know, get to the next chapter in the system. Yes, Batman's very very liberal with his uh, his groaning. Nobody heard that. What? Nobody heard that explosion. No, of course not. <laughs> Batman is stealthy. So if you bear with me for just one more second while we get through this, uh, this vent, there's a reason that uh, sometimes we lovingly, lovingly refer to this game as Ventilation Man. There's a lot of ventilation. But we're going to uh, appear in this room where there's five different enemies. And now we're going to take down these guys very quickly. And then we're going to do a corner cover zip um, out of bounds and hit a trigger got to save them. To progress the story and to do the, uh, the Scarecrow Nightmare, which is what's underneath. I missed that guy with, from with, with the Explosive Gel, which is kind of concerning. But I, I just mistimed it. Mistimed it, I should say. Wait here. It's not safe yet. I'll knock this guy out. He's the last one. Oh. There we go. And then we're gonna come over here. I just need to do this real quick, and then I can talk about it. You're Oops. safe now. Nice. Okay. So I did it. Um, it didn't look like much happened, but essentially what I did is I I did a corner cover zip, which what happens is I went into corner cover, I threw a batarang. And then I detonated gel, and those two animations overlapped and let me get out of corner cover. But I was still, the game still thought that I was in corner cover if I tried to pull out any other gadget. So what I did is I just, is, uh, so I got that storage. And then I, I wasn't in corner cover, but I was in that sort of weird in-between state. And then I threw another Batarang. And what the game does when you're in cover is whenever you throw a Batarang or use a gadget or whatever, after you do it, the game tries to put you, it, it looks at the coordinates of wherever you put, went into cover, and um, it tries to put you back there. But because I really wasn't in cover, there's no reference coordinates. So the game just goes, oh, well, we'll just take you to the origin point on the map, yeah. which happens to be very far away. So it tries to take I'm you sorry, there very quickly, and that's why it's a zip. And now that I explained all of it to you, that's a good explanation. we're going to do it again. So, Batarang, Explosive Gel. Here I'm going to use it to just get down this hallway because, whoops, faster than running. I'm going to go through this door. Nothing terribly interesting in this room, so we'll just leave. Uh-oh, scary things happening. We have to open these bags. Father should have stood up to him. So Batman's parents are dead. Mom? That's why he became Batman, really. So this is a tragedy. A tragedy has already unfolded and is unfolding again before our very eyes. But who's the third body bag for? The question is... Scarecrow. Or the answer. Can't talk. Anyways, that's actually the only time we'll see Scarecrow in the entire run, so thank you for that wonderful appearance. And now I'm going to do a zip. 
If I see Scarecrow again, you're donating. Yeah, I'll donate. How much? What are you trying to do? Look, there he is. You weren't looking, so. <laughs> you got me. You were. So th for that zip, actually, I did. I went straight up, and the reason that is is because there's actually a, a sloped surface behind that wall. You may not have seen it because the camera was really funky. But because the zip took me really far to the origin point, um, and it tried to do it quickly, but there was a slope in the way, so all that horizontal momentum went straight into vertical momentum, and he went straight into the air. Which is really good it did, because right below where I was gliding, there's actually an invisible wall. I'm gonna get one of these again. There was an invisible wall where if I had hit that, I would've just, it would've just uh, bonked me and I would've fallen forever into the void. Which is quite a bummer. And these guys. So a common theme in this game is that you can actually just run past the enemies in a lot of areas because the way the game does um, encounters with enemies is that if... I'm just going to do some zips here to save some walking time. But if the game registers that you're in an, a fight encounter, you can't go through any doors. Instead, um, the game will say, like, secure area to continue. But if you never engage with the enemies in that room to begin with, a lot of times you can just go to the door, go straight to the door, and you don't have to, um, you know, you don't have to fight them or knock them all out. But if you do get spotted or if you do engage with them at all, then um, you have to take them all out, which is, of course, a time loss. There's a lot of guys in this room. Um, but we're just going to run past all of them. There's, like, this guy. He doesn't see us. And now we're going to come up here. Just grab it up. There it is. And start the Bane boss fight. So this... Uh, this leads into fighting Bane in this arena. So here's Bane. He's a big guy. Um, and what we have to do is we have to manipulate him into charging into the walls like this, and then rip his his uh, tubes off, which is, of course, extremely painful. And we can try and manipulate him into doing another charge by walking slowly here. He didn't do it. Instead, he decided to taunt. There we go. So he can do a couple different things here. He can straight charge at you. He can taunt and just yell nasty things like, you know, you're a weenie head or whatever. I don't listen. Or he can run over to walls and then do, um, he can like pull chunks off the walls and throw them at you, which is, an, uh, again, it's just a really long animation. So that would bane fight went pretty well, all things considering. And that's also another example of why we're playing on easy difficulty, is because that fight would be about three times longer on hard, the hardest difficulty, which is unfortunate. This one's just cuts and loads. There we go. Oracle. Bruja. Bruja. It means witch. Yeah, it's, I learned Spanish from this game. We're going to do another storage here. And we're going to grapple up here. We have to go sort of across the island. Um, but I'm going to line up that zip. And this just saves walking time, these zips. But they do save quite a bit of walking time. It's been a favorite suicide location on Arkham Island for over 100 years. Yeah, I know. I want saved an unfortunate As it turns out, the place the we're going below. is to the Batcave the because the years have moved a of Batman built here. a Batcave a on Arkham Island and he says, because I wanted to be prepared for when this happened, which is pretty interesting. It makes me wonder how many Batcaves he really has. I don't know. I think that question will go unanswered for a long time. So here's the, the entrance to Dead Man's Point. Very scary. <laughs> Safe. Not even moving. Identity confirmed. Disabling countermeasures. Unfortunately, this game is, Security you know, it is story heavy. So there's a lot of you know, story progression things that we're doing. If I can get this uh, zip. Nice. 
zip just straight to the uh, the trigger to get this, which is the new um, gadget that we got. It, it also doesn't turn on the Batcave computer, which is supposed to happen during that cutscene. So actually, the Batcave computer is turned off for the rest of the run, which, if you bother to watch the cutscenes, is quite funny later on, especially when he comes in and he's like, you know, computer, formulate the antidote, antidote and uh, to the it's just like a totally blank screen. I'm going up top via the catacombs. So that's a back claw. Back claw's pretty cool. You can uh, yank things with it. Such as these uh, grates. Zoop. Zoop. Sorry, boss. This next few little part, I think we have time for donations. It's just the uh, fighting and navigation, using some zips to save some time. So. Okay. Well, we had fifteen dollars from the Mad Doge. She says my favorite Batman speedrunners all in one place. Donation worthy, for sure. This goes towards Bubbles Choice, uh, which again <laughs> was uh, Donkey Kong Country Ver Reverse Boss Order as a bonus game. And we also had five hundred dollars from Walk and Roll. Who says, go Batman and go Kojo. Thanks. I've been anxiously waiting to watch your run and donate to AGDQ 2018. Best tonight and also best to all of the other runners. Kudos to what all of you are doing to help raise money to fight cancer and good luck with Croc. Thank you. Speed tech. Yes, yeah, so that's it. Um, another example of um, getting horizontal momentum to be vertical momentum using a slope slope surface. There's still time for more donations as well while we walk forward. Perfect. Uh, we have $10 from Roadblock1118. Uh, this is my absolute favorite game series from playing the demo to begging my dad to get me this for my birthday. I've played every single one to completion. Good luck with the run, and thanks for everyone, uh, or for everything that everyone is doing. Uh, we also had $5 from an anonymous uh, donation. Been awaiting for the Arkham Asylum run for a long time. Thanks uh, to all of you speedrunners and everyone involved with these awesome events. Let's kick cancer's butt. So coming up, uh, if you were listening to Joker talk, earlier. Um, there are now snipers in the area. This is easy difficulty, so they really don't do all that much damage. We'd actually have to stealth if we were playing on any other difficulty, really, but, you know, gotta go fast, I guess. So there's, there's four snipers in this area. Um, and they're all looking at the front door of the mansion, so naturally we're just going to go straight there. I clipped a little bit. However, it's kind of funny, they can't shoot you um, while you're dodging like that. Even though that guy clearly did, if you were paying attention, he very clearly did shoot me. Just doesn't, doesn't cause any damage. Okay. We're going to get uh, an upgrade here which is the remote controlled batarang to do a skip coming up called the bell skip. The bell skip is the worst skip in the game. Um, knock on wood that it goes well. Um, what we're going to be doing is, so normally when you come, you come to the mansion, you're supposed to do a bunch of stuff, save some more people, you know, get some, get some notes, blah, 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 fight some enemies. And then eventually, Scarecrow finds you again, and you have to battle him, whatever. You climb through this, like, you know, nightmare landscape. And then you end up at the top of the bell tower. You cut the bell down, and then you can progress. Let's spin the camera here. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to use a, a batarang, a, rem a remote control batarang, to shoot through a hole in the floor. This hole in the floor right here. Yeah, I think just focus. Yeah. Nice. Easy every time. Oh my god. So, yeah, that that may not have looked that hard. This trick is frustrating. It's really frustrating. And I mean, I was <laughs> I was practicing this, man. I totally forgot how to do this for some reason. 
and it, it was not going well. Luckily, it's one of those tricks where it saves so much time that it's worth doing even if you mess it up like five times because it just skips so much story progression. <laughs> this guy. Oh, yeah. Take a seat. But yeah, the hitbox of the rope is like, like just a thin pixel, and then the hitbox of the battering itself is also like just a very thin amount. So you have to line them up really well. Come on. I guess we gotta actually hit him. That's a bummer. So <laughs> what I was trying to do is you can actually aim at his arm there, and the battering curves around and it hits him in the arm, which is totally the same as hitting him in his face, and then he gets knocked out. I had really bad aim. This is this is this is the easy part of the bell skip is doing this. There we go. <laughs> just clip him in the wrist and uh, he's knocked down. Just TV. And we're introduced to these stun stick guys who you can't attack head on. So this the first guy I'm gonna attack him head on because <laughs> you can do that because um, the first um, attack of the fight. The stunset guy is not always prepared, if that makes sense. He's not always Oracle. ready to stop you. And so that, um, for some reason, if you just punch him immediately right there, he, um, you can just punch right through it. I'm going to do that one time later on, but it's just really funny there. The next area we have to go to is the penitentiary, which is to get there just some backtracking. So uh, I think donation time once again. Okay. We had twenty dollars here from Partain. Can't ask for more on my birthday than HDQ starting in a speedy run of my all-time favorite game, Batman Arkham Asylum. Figured the least I could do was donate for the first time after watching for a couple years. Good luck to the runners, and thank you to everyone behind the scenes. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you so much for the donation. Uh, we also had a $50 donation from The Riddler. Riddle me this, AGDQ. What force and strength cannot get through? I with a gentle touch can, and many blocked by gates would stand if I were not a friend in hand. $50 up front, and 50 more if my riddle is read aloud and solved. Well... I'm sure there is some sort of a key to solving this riddle, but I guess we'll figure it out later. Mm. Is the answer of chemotherapy? Oh my chemotherapy. god. They could be. That could help. The answer might be in that answer. <laughs> uh, we also had $30 from um, Maledictus. Uh, greetings from Canada. Arkham Asylum is one of my favorite games. Glad to see it at AGDQ. Okay, so the fights are ramping up a little bit now. Whoops. I meant to do a running kick. That's okay. I totally lost count of who I hit first. So we'll just... It doesn't lose that much time. It skips maybe like one or two hits if you can properly navigate who has been hit how many times. It's also random uh, how many slow-mo hits are in a fight. And those are like, seriously, like a half a second longer than they should be. Yeah, it it can be really disorienting. Uh, whoops, I want to get a storage here because it's going to save some more running time in this area. So here's what it looks like when you're in corner cover, but there's no cover, and you just kind of zip on through. I'm dive rolling just you know, into these, uh, the triggers to start the door opening because, I don't know, it seems to save time. So right there, I actually zipped past the cutscene trigger where um, Poison Ivy yells at you. She's like trapped in that thing right there. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, maybe saves, you know, a couple seconds. But we get some funny things, some funny results when we go back through that area. See, look at that. See, <laughs> <laughs> he has to look uh, majestic. This is the hacking tool that you use to hack things, and they explode, uh, which is some powerful hacking, really. 
I don't know if I've ever seen any hacking that hacks like that. Yeah. We're gonna buy the, the hacking tool upgrades, the range amplifier, and the power amplifier. Power amplifier speeds things up, and range amplifier lets you do a couple interesting um, skips and saves a little bit of time. So Poison Ivy's now gone, but her cutscene is still here, and this is what happens when you touch it. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to keep going, but her hair separates from her um, her model because neither of them are loaded in properly right now, so it's just a fun little Easter egg in the run. Whoops, that's not the... That was my mistake. I just pressed the wrong button. I kind of messed up some timings in that fight. It wasn't very... It wasn't quite optimal, but... We're gonna keep going. Keep tracking down Harley Quinn. There's not terribly much left in the penitentiary. We just have to turn off the uh, the electric floor, and then we can progress. More upgrade points, which is going to again be handy later on when we need upgrades to save time. It is possible that when these guys when these guys uh come on man he dodged me twice. Nice. Anyways, when they um, charge at you, they do this anima uh, animation where they leap at you and then jump on your back, and they're really irritating. If you manage to run and kick them when they're in uh, the middle of their leap in a very specific spot, you can actually run and kick them, and they end up going so high that they trigger like the kill box or the kill height. So they get knocked out just by uh, you know launching about two feet higher in the air than they normally would. It saves like a second each time I do it because I don't have to you know punch them once they're in the ground. But um, it's not easy to do. It's very difficult. I may go for it in, you know, on one of them just to try and give you an idea of how it's done. But because if you miss, then they uh, they end up just hitting you if you're if you're too late. There it is. Those frequencies for the hacking device are random every time you play. Um, they're, they're random every time you play, and the, uh, the power upgrade that I got really helps speed that up a bit, but um, they're, still, they're still random every time, so each one can take a variable amount of time to figure out exactly where the, um, the analog stick should be. Down some teeth while I'm waiting. We got so many batterings. Yeah. He has an infinite amount. Uh, infinite plus one, actually. So there's a small hole. I'm pointing like you can see this. There's a small <laughs> hole. <laughs> I'm pointing at the screen. Only bubbles can see. But there's a, there's a small hole there where you can actually aim the uh, the cryptographic, the hacking tool through, and you can see the the little box, and you can hack it all the way from down on the ground. You're only supposed to like. Um, pull event down. Anyways, this is the Harley Quinn boss fight. Um, we're not actually going to fight Harley Quinn because that'd be too uh, unique and interesting. Instead, we're just going to fight some guys. I'm going to try and keep all of them knocked down here. Because now they all get knocked out and we can run up here and fight these guys. Hard boss. I got a double hit there, which is actually the first one of the run. In this game, um, they changed this in later games. Whoops. But um, when you attack and you do like a you know a punch or a kick or something, that actually has a hitbox, and that hitbox can hit more than one enemy. Oh, that was a jump. 
Um, that hitbox can hit more than one enemy, and so you can end up doing double hits with uh, hit two enemies at once, which is really cool. I can skip this. <laughs> um, but that's really cool, and it saves time if you're able to hit multiple enemies and you're able to do it consistently. It's not really that consistent, but it does save time. B plus is pretty good. Let's try and do the running kick. Nah, that wasn't high enough. That was too early. Grab another zip here that we can, or storage that we can use to do a zip later on. Um, once we get out these doors, it's actually the same zip as before that just saves the walking time to going to the uh, the north side of the island. Ooh, that was almost bad, actually. Whoops. Yeah, since you like turned off all the power in the insane asylum part, they're all uh, loose and. Instead of the normal enemies out here, it's all just the crazies. Right. What uh, what actually happened at that zip uh, was I um, I got knocked into a little rock, and so y you can kind of see when I got out of the zip, he did like a little hop, if that makes sense. Um, what usually happens if you hit the rock is you just go straight up into the air and uh, you end up water warping because the game thinks that you know you're in the water and so it just water warps you way the opposite direction of where you need to be. Either that, or it clips you right through the rock, and then you fall into the void forever, and you have to restart those things. So I'm glad neither of those happened. Even though I didn't quite get the zip I wanted. So now we're approaching the, uh, the botanical gardens. So we have to go find Ivy, because, you know, she escaped, and... That's bad. The gardens, it's funny, it used to be sort of this, the very basic, whoops, the very basic part of the game. You would just kind of go from point A to point B as fast as possible, you know, take down the guys and stuff. And, uh, well, it's pretty broken now. Knock those guys into the electric fence. Don't have to fight them. So remember when I was, uh, before I was talking about how you, if you don't engage guys, um, you can actually just go straight through them. There are six guys with guns in this room. But we're just going to leave them. Whoops. They'll still be there when I come back through, unfortunately. Whereas if you take them all out, they won't be. But then I guess we'll just have to skip them again. Stop, please! I'm not important. I can't help you. You're lucky to boss the one you hurt too bad. Say something about you being the perfect face. Nice, got a double hit there. Unfortunately, this guy is like way in the other corner of the room. So I had to go check, uh, chase him down. This guy is so nice. Thanks. The first thing he says is thanks. There's really no other guy that you rescue in the in the game that says thanks. And his second line is, are you okay? Nobody ever well, asks Batman how he's doing, if he's okay. Back. And it really gets Always on my nerves. Nobody ever asks, how's Waldo? Exactly. They only ask where. So these guys are still here in this room. Again, we're just going to skip right through them. But first, get a storage for this room. So there's a... All that nasty garbage right there. Um, I tried to show it. So this is called garbage skip, or this is part of them, um, where you get some height with a zip, and we can just fly through the void, watch the level load in, very scenic. And once we hit the glass, boom, we're back in bounds, and we've skipped this whole sequence where you have to go into like the caves underneath the ga the gardens, and it's it's just a lot of navigation that you really we don't need to do. I could think of a few other games I play that have some garbage skips. Joker's men are all wearing the security collar. I'll need to take out the operator first. So 
So I have to take out the operator first, which is that guy. Um, as you can see, we're not taking out the operator first because there's a delay between when you knock out the first guy and when the operator gets uh, alerted. So as long as I take that guy out before Joker finishes saying drop the cage, we're good, and I did, so. And then we're free to take out that last guy, which uh, I knocked him into that, that uh, <laughs> pit down there. Very dead. He's, you know, Batman doesn't kill, though. The entrance to the Titan Gravity kill. Exactly. I pick up Harley's trail again so I can find it. Hack this thing, and then we can do the double Titan boss fight. Where is this? There we go. Bye, Joker. So now we have two of these big guys. Unfortunately, they don't fall over and die uh, on their own this time. Instead, we have to fight them. I really hope he doesn't hit that guy. That's a bummer. It's fine, though. Because what I actually want to do is I want to hit them both with an explosive gel. So I'm going to put this in the middle of them, which is going to knock them out of their stun animation. And the, they stand up. And then I'll just do another one knock them back in their stun animation, and hit them for a full health bar of damage. What you're supposed to do is, and then we'll do the same thing again, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to jump on their backs and ride them when they're stunned like this, and that's so slow, because you have to then hit you know, the other guys a lot. I need this guy to come back in this direction, though. Yeah, you have to do like at least three attacks while on them before they throw you off or something. That might not hit them both. That's what I thought. I'll just punch this guy the normal way. Because they were... Whoa! They were just far enough away... Um, that'll still work. They were just far enough away to where one explosive gel wouldn't hit them both. Sometimes it happens, but... You know, slight time loss, I guess. This is funny. I'm going to need something to get over this ravine. Whoop. So if you fall into that uh, into the ravine in with a certain timing, I actually didn't get it. That's a bummer. You skip this animation. That where is he funny. <laughs> it's funny now. <laughs> um, you skip that animation where he, he you know hits his little wrist buttons and calls in the Batwing, saves like a second. But because I missed it, it uh, loses a few seconds. Whoa. Oh, there it is. First I thought that was, like, inside Batman. So the line launcher is such a fun gadget in the game. It lets you uh, basically create a little portable zip line wherever you want. And we're going to use it to now get over the ravine. Getting over it. Getting over it, yes. Not quite as good as getting over it as a hammer is, but. Yeah. And now, at this point, we have to return back to the beginning of the gardens. And there's still that, that all that garbage that's in the way, so we're gonna do the garbage skip again, but instead from this direction. And the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna stand right there, throw a batarang, we're gonna clip onto this thing, yeah. jump out of bounds, but luckily there's a little platform for us to run on. Uh, which is very nice that the developers put that in there. Because then we can just climb over all the rest of it. And now we're back at the uh, at the first room in the gardens. And for the third and final time, let's skip all these guys. Knock that guy down so he doesn't see us glide. And then we'll fly right over these guys' heads. Except I won't because I hit the little thing that's right above their head, which is unfortunate, but... Yeah, if you're noticed, you can't open doors or anything. Yeah. Let's try that. There we go. First try. I want him dead. I won't let him hurt my babies again. And sometimes you can actually hear the guys in the last room like trying to find you. They're like, where do you go? And you're already past the room. So we'll line launch over this vine. And now we're about to do one of the biggest sequence breaks in the game. Um, 
which if you've not played the game, probably won't look like much. Right that now, at this point, we're supposed to, to go to talk to Aaron Cash in the mansion. The He's to going to tell us that Killer Croc year. is They're in intensive deadly. treatment building, which is the first building in the game that we were in. Then you go there, you, on the way you get uh, caught by Scarecrow. You have to do his third and final nightmare mission, um, which of course takes a really long time. Whoa, nice. That takes a really long time. And then, finally, you get back down to the caves. Um, and then you can fight Killer Croc. And the, ga uh, the developers went ahead and they took all these other entrances to the caves, like the one I'm going through, and they put vines in the way. So, you know, to give you like an in-game, a lore reason that you can't progress. So we come down here, for example, there's these vines in the way. If you stand in this corner, do a zip, now we're past the vines. So we've effectively skipped about 13-ish minutes of content just by doing that. However, you're not supposed to be coming this way, so Oracle gets mad at you because she thinks you're actually running away from Croc. Batman, we're running out of time. So she tells you you're running out of time, even though we're trying to go really as fast as possible. <laughs> so, a little bit rude, I guess. What was the thing that Hugo Strange counts down to? Protocol 10. Yeah, like <laughs> 10 hours and then five minutes later. One hour to Protocol Batman, 10. <laughs> right. Close to Croc's so again, she calls you. She's getting a little bit impatient. So we're going to back up one step. These floating nice. I got that first try. So that zip um, sound waves the water, away does a couple Croc. things the that's, that are really cool. One, saves a lot, of, a lot of walking time in an area where you really can't afford to run. Because now we're in Killer Croc's lair. It also skips a cutscene um, where Batman lays down the explosive gel that we're going to use to uh, get Croc later on. And then finally, when I zipped, I um, I still hit the trigger to actually begin the boss room or the boss encounter, maybe. Unfortunately, this next segment is—it's just walking forward, getting these scores, doing some line launches. So I think we have time for quite a few donations. Okay. Uh, we had a five dollar donation from Schultz, who says the answer to the These riddle wasn't chemotherapy, guys, but it was close. It was a key. Oh. Uh, we had fifty dollars from the Riddler. Uh, shortly after that, that was an easy one, AGDQ. But I'm a man of my word, so here's that additional fifty dollars. Thank you. Hey, thank you. <laughs> I ziplined into the water there, which uh, doesn't put me back too far because there was just a save. Um, it sets him up for a skip up here. True. Anyways, you can continue with the donations. Okay. Uh, we had $10 from Awesome. It's Amy. When the screams of Batman's enemies activate Siri on your phone, you know you have to <laughs> donate. So here's your money. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, we had $100 from Lasona. I haven't seen a garbage skip that good since I decided not to play Origins. Good luck, oh. Kojo, and shout out to Bubbles on the Couch. Shots fired. Oof. Shout out to Shots fired. Yeah. That's good. Shout out to Arkham Origins. <laughs> it's, it's not a good game. It's not a good game. It's really not. If you want to play a bad game, play Arkham Origins. Right. Uh, we had a $200 donation from Mayul. Uh, keep up the great work, everyone. You are all awesome, and thank you for putting on this awesome event from the behind-the-scenes crew to the runners to the audience. It always makes me happy to see gamers getting together to raise money that will change the world for the better. Well, thank you so much for that generous donation. Thank you. Yeah, we're big gamers. Just gaming. Uh, we had $5.69 from Barkeem. This event is always so great. Happy to donate to such a worthy cause. Lots of love to the Boyks and all of the runners. Thank you. Yeah, shout out to the Boyks. Yeah, I like that guy. Shout out to the Boyks. Uh, $20 and nine cents from Adam Vest, who just says, na 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 Batman. Thanks, Adam Vest. <laughs> it's like the knockoff Adam West. Well, why didn't exactly. they get that the first time? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, we had a $50 anonymous donation. Keep it up. Keep up everything. Much love for this event and all the runners. So happy AJDQ is running the whole week. Aw, yeah. Uh, we had a $30 donation from Armadillo64. My first donation of the marathon. I'll be donating every day. This one goes towards reverse boss order for Donkey Kong Country. Good luck with the Batman run and show Mark Hamill who's boss. Thank you. We will be punching plenty of clown at the end of the game. Uh, we have $50 from Ari uh, Strunger. Uh, my mom was diagnosed with cancer when I was a kid. 20 years later, she's still going strong thanks to the cancer being caught early. Here's $50 to help more people be as fortunate as my mom has been. Uh, glad to hear that. I've got enough scores. I need to get back to the Batcave and formulate the antidote. Oh, I get it. You've activated a sonar beacon down there. Clever. Oracle, I'm getting out of here. So zoomed into that pipe there because normally you're supposed to be a problem. put a sonar beacon on it. We skipped that cutscene though when we came in. So now we have to put one in um, on the way out. Normally what I would do is I would go ahead and get an upgrade here, which um, at the end of this sort of scripted running sequence where he breaks the things behind you and you're supposed to be like a little scared of it, even though I don't think he can actually catch you here. Um, and normally if you get the auto proximity detonation upgrade for your gel, he just pops out of the water faster. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. It's just one of those sort of weird correlation things. He would pop out of the water now if I had that upgrade. Um, however, I actually have to put this gel on manually. So I didn't go ahead and get the upgrade because I died during the croc phase. I fell in the water that one time, if you remember. So um, there we go. So I had to, uh, to put the gel on manually. If I didn't die during the croc uh, fight, I would have made it all the way up back to the, back to the beginning. The cutscene trigger that I skipped on the way in would still be there. And then that would put down the gel automatically. So I lost a little bit of time in addition to you know falling in the water and having to restart. I lost a little bit of time to that. Um, but it's not that big of a deal. It's not down here. So, six more guys here, six more guys to run past. Give them a big kick. I think I knocked down one or two of them. Because we do actually have to fight them on the way back in. If you don't fight them now. But we have a little bit of help next time we go in. And you'll see what I mean in a sec. So we're back in the back cave and we get to, you know, do some plot stuff. But we'll skip that. Because now we've got the Ultra Bat Claw, which is a gadget so good that they took it out of the sequels. It doesn't appear in any other Batman game because it's just really good for clearing out enemies and for helping during fights. We have to use it to pull down some, some big walls real quick. And there's a, a sort of a platform section coming up that I'm gonna do some, some uh, gliding right here to skip part of. If you just run off this ledge, go straight left, then usually you have enough height to make this, um, this glide. You skip that whole, that whole section on the right there, it doesn't matter. Coming back in here, we're coming back into the area where there, there were those guys um, that I that I ziplined past before. There they are. What I can do is I can restart checkpoint here, which resets uh, all the ones that are still alive. It resets their positions to where they started. However, now that we have progressed the story a little bit, there's actually a poison ivy plant right next to them. Um, and by the time I get up there, we should be able to see Poison Ivy Plant take down a couple of them. Yep, took down three of them, and then we'll just yank the remaining three off. So don't have to fight them at all. One more zip to skip some walking. 
And now we're back in this room, and guess what? We're gonna do the same zip that we did last time to get some height and climb back to the top. Unfortunately, nothing that simple. I'm at the main sewer junction, and it appears Whoa. to be polluted with Titan. It's not quite what I meant to do, but he doing now? it's not that big of a deal. Shut them all down. What will happen if this Titan stuff reaches Gotham? It won't reach Gotham. This next part is some more navigation, so I think now's a good time for a few more donations, if you've gotten any. We have gotten a few. Uh, LK47 just kind of subbing in for what <laughs> he needed to take a break. Uh, so we have a $100 anonymous donation. Reed's first donation this year. Been donating since 2015, aiming to donate more every year. My mother found a spot on her skin that turned out to be skin cancer. Happily, it hadn't spread in her body, and it was a simple procedure to remove it. If you ever notice something abnormal on you, talk to a doctor. And Boyk is back here, so I'm going to meet the mic and hand it right back over to him. Thanks, Alex. It's a wonderful destination. All right, we also had 150 anonymous, uh, $150 anonymous donation. It says third time watcher, first time donator. Thank you. Very generous. So the next uh, room, again, you know, one more room, guys with guns, you're supposed to take them out. But if we remain undetected the whole time, easier done than said, we can go over here. These guys will all turn just in time for you to glide right here. We can stand on the stairs, hack this little box, and hopefully get out before anybody turns around and looks behind them and notices the, uh, the man in the bat suit crouched playing on his iPhone. And because nobody saw me, we get to take advantage of the fact that we don't have to engage with any of them at all, and we can just leave. And now we enter sort of the final stretch of the game, where it kind of just becomes boss rush, boss rush mode, sort of an old, like, um, an homage to, you know, older games where boss rushes were very common at the end of the game. And so we get to fight a Titan enemy, we get to fight Poison Ivy, we get to fight another Titan enemy, and then we get to fight Joker, who becomes a Titan enemy. So there's some good uh, boss variety coming up. With this boss, though, we actually can do um, a fast elevator skip. If I can do this correctly, I will talk about it after I do it, or after I don't do it. so far. So the goal is to take down all of these guys simultaneously, which just happened, and then we have just enough time to shoot this at the wall, use our mouse wheel, and uh, there those guys go. So there's actually two more waves of thugs down below that come out of the elevators, but because I managed to take down the big titan enemy, whoops, nice jump. Um, because I managed to take down the big titan enemy at the same time as I took down all that first wave of guys, for a split second, Batman was registered as not being in combat anymore, and he was able, you're able to um, shoot your bat claw at that wall above. It's not terribly easy, um, so I'm glad I got it, because it is a worthwhile time save on, on any difficulty, really. So now we get to go back to the, the islands. 
which is now covered in red, uh, as you can see. Ivy's getting strong. There's lots of red everywhere. Um, that's really all Poison Ivy has done since she got free. It's just make red, make red things everywhere. But we have what to go fight it regardless. This island belongs to me now. I'm everywhere. My babies know your every move. You and your kind are arrogant enough to think you can destroy us. You're kind you will so fail. Specious. And we, we will become the most powerful force on the planet. You will pay back for hurting my babies. Whoops, forgot about that. So um, you're here at we last. can skip over this Do you like if we just do that. My babies are growing Batman. Come I'm trying, Ivy. You put a bunch of stuff in my way. <laughs> More food for my plants. Do we have time for a donation, maybe? Uh, yeah, I think we do. Okay. Come to me. Uh, we have a forty dollar donation from from uh, Fully Automato. Yo, what I up, Kojo? Good luck and have fun, and hopefully we can see you dab. No. Which uh, is not gonna happen. I'm it's, sorry. No, so, it's not. Unfortunately, yeah. I made a promise that if I got world record on stream, or uh, you know, here right now, I would dab. It's oh, not possible yeah, anymore. More. Thankfully. <laughs> yes, thankfully. Dang it! <laughs> so, hold on one second. This first phase is really important. That's one. I'll explain it afterwards. Sorry. That's two. I'm, do I'm doing critical hits. Okay, so I managed to get two. There are four possible that you can do there. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get them. Because normally what she does is she opens up for little, you know, you'll see in a sec, like that thing. She opens that up and then you hit her for big damage. And you can just spam batterings at her and you'll chip away at her health. But of course you want, th you want those big hits. You can manipulate her into opening her, um, you know, that thing. You can o uh, she'll open it if you get grabbed by those vines. And she'll open it while you're being um, while you're being grabbed. So if you throw a batarang right before you get grabbed, the bat as the batarang's traveling in the air, you get caught by the vines. Don't she, op you know, exposes her flower part, and then she gets hit in the face. The cytoplasm. Exactly. That's a that's a much better way to put it. So we're on phase two of the fight. Yeah, it's a little bit harder to do those hits. I can go for one here, I guess. No, I can't because that guy punched me. I'm just gonna wait for her to um, to do this attack. Luckily, we're on easy difficulty, so we can just kind of spam straight through most of her attacks. Us. I just realized my health is one, I'm one point away from dying, which would really stink if I died. So I did what I talked about before and I got that health upgrade, um, and I bat snacked. Whoa, don't grab him. So some, also sometimes what happens is your battery gets stuck. Um, usually it happens when you get grabbed by the vines, but you have to, you have to manually switch to it before you can continue quick firing batarangs. And that's the Ivy boss fight. So, it didn't go terribly, but it could have gone um, much better than that if I had gotten those, those critical hits early on. Oh, he watched the show. 
We've got we are on our way everyone. to the last Use part of the game. I know you'll be monsters. sad to see me go, but it's this. time that we part. So, so these guys here, um, if you play casually, they actually... You don't have to fight them. But fighting them is faster than going through the dialogue, because normally they're like, oh, you have to be on the guest list for Joker's party, and then they go through it's the they go through and it's really long um, whoops. and um, you know it's just faster to punch them all thank you everyone uh, it's the most claps he's got this whole room goodness <laughs> <laughs> oh but now it's a pity clap <laughs> So there's actually something I can I can talk about. There's there's a broom clip here that you can do. There's no glass on this um, on this thing where Joker is. And uh, a runner two years ago was able to get it once, and uh, since then it's never been gotten again. It would it would completely skip all this uh, mandatory waiting and this whole cutscene if you were able uh, ever able to get this in a run. Um, sometimes I go for it just for fun, but. Seven, six, five, four. No, we have to wait for him to explode anyways. Two, one. Anyways, there we go. So if you, again, if you can find a way to do that consistently, you will be a Batman speedrunning hero. At least in my eyes. penultimate boss fight here, which has two titans and a bunch of random guys. I'm going to try and manipulate all of them into the corner so I can do sort of what I did with the elevator fight. Um. Which I actually might be able to do. Which is to use explosive gel. And then detonate it, and then skip, uh, you know, riding on the Titan's back and all that stuff. So this fight went really well, actually. That's very difficult to do, even in a good run. I'm not even going to try and do it one more time, though. I don't think I could get it. So I'll just take these guys down normally. And that's that fight. Because you actually only have to take down the Titan enemies. These guys don't really matter. You just kind of play with them. And uh, then the game progresses. And now we fight the final boss, who is Joker. Who injects himself with the Titan Venom and becomes... This thing. Get ready to tango. It won't kill you to First phase is just avoiding him, trying to manipulate him into a certain distance from this platform in the front, so that uh, when he does that, he doesn't have to walk very far. That time he did have to walk a couple steps. In you come, boys. Then we have to fight these guys. So we'll just take them down as quickly as possible. Luckily, the helicopter came around right when I was done. Sometimes you have to wait for the helicopter because you have to wait for the helicopter because uh, you need to pull him down when he turns around. Sometimes his helicopter will take so long to come that you just lose time due to that uh, sort of randomness. And we have to do that two more times, and then we have defeated the final boss. came around very quickly though. What are you <laughs> you 
What? I just like it. It gets stuck. You would think he would learn to fall on his back. Or just to not look at the helicopter. <laughs> right. I think maybe maybe the fourth try he might figure <laughs> it out, but he never gets that far. Yeah. Back in a second. That's Pretty much City is his fourth try. Come in, boys. Right. But, him out of it. You know, things don't go so well for him in that game either. <laughs> Whoa, that now that guy went flying. Almost moon goon. Almost moon goon. I'll cons that's a moon goon if I've seen one. I'll accept it. Yeah. So time is coming up once I finish this mashing here. And three, two, one, time. <laughs> Sorry about the late, late uh, warning on that. That was less than a minute cool. off the PB. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty good. And that's Arkham Asylum. There is one last thing before I leave. After the credits, there's a cutscene where one of three villains will grab the Titan container, and it's a big cliffhanger, and it's random every time. So your choices are Bane, Scarecrow, and Killer Croc. So so go ahead and place your votes now. Who Firefly. you think? No, he's not, he's not one of those three. If you're chatting, you can go ahead and put that in the chat, and uh, we'll see who it is. My vote is for Killer Croc. It's the water, so it's got to be Penguin. <laughs> and... Ah, it was Bane. All right. Well, if you got Bane right, congratulations. If you didn't, then you didn't really lose anything. But that's Arkham Asylum. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. If you're interested in running this yourself, um, we have a Discord. You know, we're always able to help you, always willing to help. Um, I have a tutorial video on it as well. And that's it. All right. Awesome run there. Thank you so much. Uh, for that excellent Batman Arkham Asylum run, Code Rizal. Uh, we have a couple quick donations here. Uh, $20 from Game Boy.